welcome to the channel and uh, today we're going to be taking a closer look at the three branches of government. Uh, of course we have the executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial. One word that I'd like you to know is ratified. Uh, last lesson we talked about the ratification of the Constitution. Uh, ratified means given formal approval. It means it is now the law of the land. They approved it and so this is our new government, the Constitution. It is a brilliant constitution is a brilliant form of government um, make sure that nobody can become too powerful I mean president you think he's like a king nope a lot of things that can uh, stop him from doing things so for instance let's take a look president uh, gets to choose who helps him uh, people these advisors run uh, are called a cabinet uh, people like the Secretary of State Secretary of Defense they, they're in charge of parts of the government uh, to make sure that it runs well. Remember, the executive branch executes the laws. They're, they're charged with carrying out the laws that the legislative branch um, passes. So they're the ones that are going to um, head up departments that deal with defense, justice, trade, education, money, environment, everything. Okay. Uh, they make sure that the laws of the nation are enforced. Okay. Any laws that come out of the legislature, they make sure that people are following them. Um, and then when we talk about the Supreme Court, right here, well, where did these people come from? The president picks the Supreme Court. However, it has to be approved by the Senate and the legislature before they can get to the Supreme Court. president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He gets to tell the army what to do. However, he cannot declare war. Congress is the only one that can declare war in another country. The president makes treaties with other countries. However, the Senate has to ratify those treaties. He can't just go around making treaties and that's it. The Senate has to approve those treaties. So uh, you could see here that he gets to do a lot of things. However, he relies on other parts of the government to make sure that they go through. So they have to work together. The legislative branch uh, is called Congress and made up of two separate houses. Remember we talked about this last time. Senate, every, every state has two senators doesn't matter how big the state is and then the House of Representatives the bigger states get more votes uh, in the Senate they serve a six-year term so they get to stay in the Senate longer whereas in the House of Representatives it's only a two-year term right over here um, so they get elected much more frequently than the Senate and that is by design these are supposed to be closer and more receptive to the people whereas the Senate is supposed to look out more for the states, the state of the country, and so forth, and uh, so they get a six-year term so they can just focus on that instead of trying to do exactly what the people want. Uh, the founders were very sensitive that, yes, the people, we're trying to represent the people, but sometimes the people can uh, get a little bit out of hand um, when it comes to certain policies. They don't see the full picture. That people definitely need to be representative, but there needed to be a balance to make sure there's no mob rule or you know, people just ganging up on, on other people. Uh, so that's why we have that set up there. They both write laws for the country and decide if it comes law. Senates vote on treaties and uh, with other countries and on new federal judges. Remember we talked about that with the executive branch. Executive branch uh, nominates judges, they nominate um, other cabinet members, and the Senate has to approve them. And then, of course, treaties, the president uh, for, forms treaties with other countries uh, and then the senators uh, have to approve it. Then we get to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is not elected by the people. These people serve as long as they want. There's no term limits. They don't get voted in. They have to wait until the president decides that they're good enough for it and the Senate has to approve it. So these two branches of government decide what goes into this branch of government. But it's a very powerful branch. They serve as long as they want and uh, then they have one person who's a chief justice who presides over, kind of like what we talked about, George Washington presiding over the Constitutional Convention. And then they hear cases, they interpret the laws that Congress passes, and if they feel that a law that the Congress passes goes against the Constitution, they declare it unconstitutional and that law is basically null and void. So judicial branch can have a lot of power um, but they have to be, you know, they're supposed to be the final arbiters uh, to make sure that 
these other branches are doing what they're supposed to be doing according to the Constitution. They can't just make stuff up. They have to use the Constitution to justify what they say. So if the uh, Congress is passing laws that go against the Constitution, uh, for instance, if, um, if, the, if the, they want to uh, stop Internet use because people are saying bad things about the government, well, then they go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, hey, you know, First Amendment rights, it's in the Constitution. You can't take that away. And so they, have, they strike down the law, and that law is, is gone. So a very powerful branch there. However, they rely completely on the Senate and the executive for being appointed there. They, you know, they have to be very careful of who they put in there, but they have full control over who goes into the Supreme Court. Okay. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, the checks and balances, some examples here. So let's say the Congress uh, sets up a law, a law that they like, and the president doesn't like it. The president gets to veto the law. Okay. So that law, no good. I don't like it. I'm not going to sign it. Um, I don't, it's not going to be a law. So that goes back to the Congress. Now, the law is dead unless Congress can get two-thirds, which is a lot of people. I mean, it is really hard to override a veto, but Congress has the power to override a, a presidential veto if it, the law is really, really good that so many people uh, say, no, no, this is a really good law, Mr. President. We're going to override your veto. Okay? So that's the checks and balances. Yes, they can pass whatever they want. The president can veto. He can say, no, no, I don't think that's a good idea. It's not going to work. And if Congress cannot get two-thirds, then the law is dead. But if they do get two-thirds of Congress, then it doesn't matter what the president says. It's law. Okay. Uh, another example, president picks uh, a justice for Supreme Court. It has to go to the Senate. And then if the Senate agrees with him, then that justice gets to go on the Supreme Court. Otherwise, his picks are, are you know, erased. They're no good. And then finally, we have the judicial branch. They decide if the laws agree with the Constitution. So if the, the uh, Congress makes a law that's against the Constitution, then they can strike it down. Likewise, if the president does something that goes against the Constitution, uh, let's say he starts shutting down newspapers because he doesn't like what they're writing about him the justices can say that he's acting outside of the constitution and tell him and they get to tell him to stop okay now here's here's the thing you know the judicial branch they don't have any police force how are they supposed to get rid of you know let's say a president is out of control and they decide you know this president is is uh, shutting down newspapers and uh, he's totally out of bounds of the constitution and then the president says you know what what are you going to do about the supreme court you know you can't do anything well then the uh, Congress can impeach and remove the president from office. So uh, if two branches of government gang up on the other one, then the, the, the Constitution will win out. Uh, the Constitution basically encourages that if somebody is out of line, if, if um, these, you know, any of these branches are stepping out of bounds, the other two have the power to stop the other one. So they all have to work together, otherwise there's going to be problems, and the, the one branch that's out of line uh, will start to um, have trouble. So that's just one example of how the Constitution works. Make sure that we don't have anybody that's too powerful. Uh, it's a brilliant system, and uh, we will go into it further with the amendment process tomorrow. But right now, you just need to remember... Um, the executive branch carries out the laws. They get to do all the things that uh, executes the laws, including hiring the people that they need to to execute the laws, like cabinet members, advisors, um, and they get to uh, pick the judges. But they need the legislature to approve the judges. Legislature makes the laws. Um, Senate has two senators doesn't matter population house representative we went over this yesterday six years for the senators two years for the representatives and then supreme court lifetime appointment there's no two years six years they could go as long as they want oh one other thing president four-year terms okay president can go into office and serve four years and he can do that twice he or she we haven't got a, a woman president yet 
at the time of this video. However, anyone that wins the presidency can run for two terms and they last four years each. Almost forgot that. Good thing I got that in there. And then the uh, justices down here, uh, they get to decide if any of these branches are working outside of the Constitution uh, and they could strike down laws or they can stop the president from doing things that are outside of the Constitution. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time when we talk about the Bill of Rights.